Okay, we're going to try to do this in uh, multiple parts now since uh, the uh, we were interrupted before. I had to stop for a uh, for a phone call. So um, uh, I I was talking about the uh, um, we were looking at the text, the third paragraph in um, in the text of the Cypria. Um, Paris Alexandrus had um, been given a prophecy by his brother Helenus that um, everything would be fine. He would marry uh, Helen. But then he goes to his sister as well. His sister Cassandra is also a uh, prophet. and uh, But her prophecy has a glitch. Um, and the glitch was given to her by when she was given the powers of prophecy by Apollo because Apollo wanted to seduce her. Apollo wanted her. She wanted no part of uh, Apollo. Uh, and so, uh, uh, so for refusing the love of the God, um, she is punished by... Now, he can't take away what he'd given her, her powers of prophecy. Uh, the best he can do is render it useless by... Uh, by cursing her with um, never being believed. So she uh, tells the future accurately, but uh, no one will ever believe her prophecies. So she says, yes, you will win the love of Helen, but um, you, will, uh, you will start a great war and many people will die and everybody will hate you. Uh, and so, but of course that he doesn't believe. The text next says, Alexandrus next lands in Lacedaemon, that is Sparta. Uh, and that's what we see next, if we could, if I could get this to switch. There we go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Paris visits uh, uh, Menelaus in Argos, and or in Sparta, actually, is, uh, is uh, what's said to you. Helen is uh, from Argos. The whole Argolid is... Um, is ruled by this family of Menelaus and uh, uh, Agamemnon. Uh, but in the epic cycle, uh, Menelaus is depicted as um, being in Lacedaemon, which is uh, the same as Sparta. Uh, Lacedaemon actually is the region, and Sparta is the biggest uh, city-state in, uh, in the region. Uh, <clears throat> so there, um, uh, where in the course of a feast, he, that is Paris, gives gifts to Helen. Um, after this, Menelaus sets sail for Crete, ordering Helen to furnish the guests with all they require until they depart. Meanwhile, Aphrodite brings Helen and Alexandrus together. That's what we see in this painting here by Jacques-Louis David. Um, and... Uh, after their union, put very great treasures on board and sail away at night. This is why we're told first uh, that Aphrodite uh, um, uh, suggests that he build a fleet of ships. That's why, because he's going to sail away not only with Helen, but with um, much of Menelaus' uh, goods, much of his wealth. <clears throat> Hera stirs up a storm against them, and they're carried to Sidon. That's in the eastern shore of the Mediterranean. That is the region where uh, Agenor was from, if you remember the story of uh, that father of, uh, uh, of Europa, um, where Alexandrus takes the city. Okay, From there, he sails to Troy and celebrates his marriage with uh, Helen. So there's the fleet. Um, and uh, Oh, actually, no, this is the Greek. Fleet, uh, so I'm, I'm jumping ahead. Uh, in the meantime, Castor and Polydoikes, while stealing the cattle of Idas and Lyncaeus, were caught in the act, and Castor was killed by Idas and Lyncaeus and Idas uh, by Polydoikes. Um, Zeus gave them immortality every other day. The problem was, <clears throat> of course, um, in this cattle raid, uh, the mortal. Um, uh, Castor is killed, um, but uh, the um, uh, the demigod cannot be uh, uh, killed, and so uh, uh, Zeus uh, and the they're they're loving twins, and uh, so Polydoikes can't bear to be without his uh, his brother, so he asks Zeus to give uh, immortality to his brother, but 
the only way to do that is to take half of it from you. So you they they alternate uh, every other day. They get to be alive. Um, okay. So Aphrodite says um, uh, that we just read that Aeneas to sail with uh, with Paris. Okay. So now the gathering of the fleet. The map here, uh, the the uh, at the right there we see uh, where Troy is. Aulis is the port from which. Uh, all of the Greek ships from all over Greece, uh, they converge there uh, uh, in order to sail uh, to Troy. Okay, um, but uh, they're denied a uh, uh, a favorable wind uh, because of the death of the uh, one of uh, it's Agamemnon who kills a stag. You see the stag over there in the left in this uh, picture by Perrier. That's before he started making the sparkling water. Um, <clears throat> uh, Agamemnon had killed a stag that was sacred to Artemis. And so uh, Calchas, we'll, we'll read about Calchas in the uh, Iliad as the, uh, the prophet of the, uh, uh, the Greeks. Um, uh, he said that the oracles say that he uh, that uh, Agamemnon, to receive the favorable winds, has to sacrifice his daughter Iphigenia um, uh, in place of the stag. Okay, so um, they do so. Although um, actually, not every version is uh, is clear on that, and unfortunately, this summary doesn't make it clear whether or not. Um, Agamemnon actually killed his um, child. In many other versions, it is exactly parallel to the story of uh, Abraham and Isaac, uh, in which just the willingness to do so is uh, is enough. The willingness to uh, the piety to follow the will of the gods uh, is enough, and so uh, Iphigenia is spared, and uh, uh, in fact Artemis takes her as a priestess. Um, uh, in her temple, so uh, so that's another version. But uh, but in some versions, he actually kills his daughter. Uh, regardless of of which version, uh, they both end with the uh, um, the uh, um, the fleet sailing, getting the uh, the right uh, wind, and sailing to Troy. And they stop first at the island of Tenedos. Now remember, keep in your mind's eye this. Um, uh, this geography here, the island with which the white arrow is pointing out, uh, Tenedos off the coast of Troy, because that uh, um, uh, that can be seen, that island can be seen from Troy, and uh, it becomes a a place of hiding for the uh, uh, for the Greek forces. Okay. Um, now this is where the uh, um, the incident of Philoctetes uh, uh, happens. Um, and I don't see that in the text. Um, uh, where is it? Um, well, I don't see it. Okay, well, take my word. Oh, yes, there it is. Okay, it's in the second column of, um, on page 137. Next, they sail as far as Tenedos. We just saw that. Uh, and while they are feasting, Philoctetes is bitten by a snake and is left behind in Lemnos. Okay. Now, the reason that this is significant is that um, uh, Philoctetes is the uh, the greatest of the archers uh, among the um, Greeks, and uh, that skill of archery uh, becomes a, a great loss to the Greeks, um, especially uh, because later on we discover that they can't win the Trojan War uh, without uh, the bow of Philoctetes. Actually, it's the bow of Heracles, because Heracles uh, received the bow of uh, Philoctetes. But in the meantime, this is what happens to him. He, uh, um, he's bitten by the snake, and the infection has uh, stinks so bad that the other Greeks uh, exile him, leave him behind, and they go on to, uh, uh, to Troy. Okay. Um, so now the uh, uh, Achilles... Uh, sailing with the uh, Greek fleet uh, attacks uh, Pedasus, and we see that there, uh, the shorter arrow, uh, and Lyrnesus, uh, that's the longest arrow that we uh, see there, both of which are mentioned uh, somewhere there. Um, yes, uh, uh, in the uh, the last um, 
the last section of uh, fragment number one. The Achaeans next desire to return home, but are restrained by Achilles, who afterwards drives off the cattle of Aeneas and sacks Lernessus and Pedessus and many of the neighboring cities and kills Troilus. Okay. Uh, now, the story of Troilus, uh, we see several vase paintings uh, uh, illustrating this. Um, Athena, the goddess of wisdom, uh, this is the whole story behind it. it it's told in shorthand here by um, uh, Stasinus, or actually by Proclus in his summary. Uh, but here's the full story. Um, Athena tells Achilles that uh, Troy will stand only if Paris's brother, Troilus, uh, lives to be a man. Uh, so that means that in this story, in, in various versions in the Middle Ages and in the Renaissance, Troilus is depicted as a full-grown man. But uh, it's clear from the story that he must be an ephib, that is, uh, not yet attained the f full manhood. Uh, so he's an adolescent. Um, so um, uh, the, the brother of Paris, one of the brothers of Paris, Trollus, um, has to die uh, uh, so that Troy will, um, will, will fall. Uh, so Achilles, learning of this prophecy, uh, hides in ambush. He knows that um, uh, Troilus likes to ride out uh, horseback with, uh, with his sister. Um, uh, we just mentioned her, um, Cassandra. And uh, so he hides in ambush. That little, um, that little structure there is uh, the fountain, a well with a, with a fountain. So he's, he's hiding behind the well house there. Um, and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I said, um, I said Cassandra, it's actually another sister, Polyxena. Um, so, Trollus and his sister Polyxena had ridden to the well house. Um, so, uh, this is actually the other side of the vase that you just saw earlier, okay? Back there, there's the one side, and you can see on the right, uh, just, uh, a portion of Polyxena running away, and now there is, uh, you know, there you see the well at the uh, left and Polyxena running and, uh, and Troilus on horseback. Okay, uh, so another version of the same story. Um, we have Polyxena escaping, uh, but Achilles grabs the Ephib uh, Troilus by the hair, pulls him from the horse. Uh, that's another version of the same uh, story. And, uh, and in yet another version, here we see him uh, being executed at, uh, the, at the altar. Okay, so that is the story of the death of Troilus, uh, which is the next part of the, uh, um, of the Cypriad. Uh, and uh, actually, the last uh, and the end of the... Uh, of all of the Cypria, uh, the uh, the uh, Cypria uh, is what happens at Lernessus. It's there that Achilles makes his um, uh, conquest. Uh, there we see ancient Bryces. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's Phoenix, uh, kind of the stepfather to Achilles, uh, and uh, Briseis, and Briseis is a beautiful um, uh, Lernessian. Uh, that Achilles uh, uh, grabs as his war prize, and that is going to be the uh, the beginning of the end uh, of the Trojan War, as we will see in um, in uh, the Iliad uh, on uh, well next week after we're done with the uh, exam. So, uh, thank you for your kind attention during this whole. A difficult process, uh, uh, and it's a it's a learning curve for me. It's uh, uh, um, I'm I'm trying to get this uh, uh, software to work, and so uh, you'll have to watch this in two parts. But that's easy enough. I'll download them as uh, part one and part two, and uh, uh, you should do just fine. So uh, good luck on the exam, and uh, we'll see you uh, next time we meet in class to talk about the first two books of uh, the Iliad. Okay, bless you.